Seaburn, born in 1869, was the first to use electrical circuitry in cipher machines. The Heburn device used a wired rotor to change the electrical signal generated by a keyboard stroke. The rotor would then rotate, changing for the next keystroke. When did he come up with his ideas? Well, legend has it, Edward Heburn did some time for misappropriating someone else's horse, but not this one. In the mid-1920s, he was mired down in a stock fraud trial presided over by future Supreme Court Justice Earl Warren. Although Heburn's guilty verdict was thrown out on appeal, by the time the whole ordeal was resolved, he was bankrupt. He had some luck selling his devices to the Navy, but his 1934 machine didn't work at all, and that was the end of his government contracts. They might not have worked that well, but they sure did look cool. There aren't a lot of these devices around, but the National Cryptological Museum has quite the collection. Let's take a look. We're in door 15, a part of the National Cryptologic Museum the public doesn't normally get to see. So this is the first wired rotor cryptographic machine ever? It is. So this is the Heburn code machine. So as you can see from this one, it's just a single rotor. It is the first rotor machine in the U.S., uh, made about 100 years ago, that would have actually used electrical circuitry inside of it. Uh -huh. So the, the, rotors, the rotors would have been wired, um, and it would have made it a little easier to code some of these devices. Right. Now, it would have worked in conjunction with a typewriter. So essentially, a typewriter would sit right next to it. They would put the message in on here, and it would code out on the typewriter. Okay. Um, the rotor itself acted as a scrambling mechanism to kind of throw off those numbers in there and change how they would have come out. And you're saying the rotor, so there's only the one? The rotor. There's so only there's one. only one rotor, and you can see it right here. It's got the letters on it and everything. Um, it's entirely made of brass, so it's kind of interesting looking in general. Um, and obviously made by Edward Heburn himself. So. Who also had patents for electric he typewriters. He did. He had patents for electric typewriters. And the fun story about him is he was actually in jail in 1908 for stealing a horse. And that's where he came up with the time to develop these devices. Um, and then from there, we have, this is the number one. So this would have been the first code machine that he came out with. And it's, and it's beautiful. So he's, oh, he's clearly making it like commercially. So mm -hmm. he wants to attract Exactly. And this is actually number two. So this is the second one, and you can see the difference from here to there. This one has five rotors on it, but at the same time, it also has a light board on there as well. So he would have typed it in, and the light board would have popped up that way. Now, with this one, also, you can see the brass, but it, also, it would have come in its own case as well. And we do have part of the case here as the uh -huh. base, and it would have come over the front, so it would have made it easy for carrying. Like a typewriter. Like a typewriter, and that's essentially how it was meant to be. Okay. And so with the wired rotors, when we talk about wired rotors all the time, but the design of them. So basically what you have is the alphabet on one mm -hmm. side and then the alphabet on the other side and the wires cross. So exactly. that when you type a letter in, it comes out as a different letter. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's just, like I said, scrambling mechanism to kind of change it to increase the enciphering method of the device itself. So this one would have been fairly easy to break since it's only one Only rotor. one. Wait, what? What did he mean it's easy to break? And who was the highly skilled female analyst that broke the one rotor machine? Find out the answer to these burning questions and more in our next episode.